Hey everyone, welcome to Coding Simplified and today we'll see very important question in BST or binary search tree. So basically we are given a BST here, we need to find out the LCA for given two values. Now what is LCA? LCA is low one common ancestor, right? So we need to find the lowest common ancestor for two given values. Now let's understand the question first, like what is LCA or what is lowest common ancestor? So in this case what happens that we are given this BHT, this is BHT or binary search tree. Now here we are given two values, right? So let's say first take this example, here we have two values 2 and 7. And now it is saying that you need to find out the lowest common ancestor. So let's understand first of all, like what is ancestor? Ancestor is means what is a parent, right? Or it could be any parent, it could be parent, it could be grandparent or it could be any parent, which should be ancestor. Like if you see what is 2 and 7? 2 is here and 7 is here, right? So which are the ancestors of 2 and 7? The ancestors are 6, 8, right? Because the, it starts from 8, so ancestors are 6 and 8. And they are common ancestors, right? Common ancestors means that 6 is an ancestor of 2 as well and 6 is an ancestor of 7 as well. Similarly, if you see here that at 8 is an ancestor of 2 as well and 8 is an ancestor of 7 as well. Now, so this is we call as common ancestor that the 6 and 8 are common ancestors of 7, 2 and 7. Now the term is lowest common ancestor. So lowest common ancestor means that if you see that for 2 and 7, the ancestors are 6 and 8. But what we need to return? We need to return the lowest common ancestor, right? So when we say lowest, so if you see for 2 and 7, this is the immediate, this is, this is immediate ancestor right and then we have this ancestor so basically it's going this in this direction so what is lowest lowest will be this one this one is the lowest common ancestor right so that is why we have written here that for 2 and 7 the lowest common ancestor will be 6 right now let's see for this one so this is very important that you understand this so first of all we need to find out the ancestor then we need to find out the common ancestor of both and then we need to identify the lowest common ancestor right so once you have find out this one, then if you see, then let's see this one. So we need to find out the ancestor of 2 and 15. Now where is 2? So 2 here, we have this one, 2 is here and 15 is here, right? So what is the common ancestors? For, for this 2 and 15, the common ancestor is only 8, right? So we can say the common ancestor is 8. Similarly, if you see for 2 and 6, so for 2 and 6. So here we have 2 and here we have 6, right? So for 2 and 6, if you see, the common ancestor, what is? The common ancestor is the 6 itself. Because the ancestor of this 2 is 6, right? So it means the 6 will be ancestor. Now if you see the ancestor of 8 and 7, so this 8 is here and 7 is here. So again, the ancestor will be 8 because 8 is ancestor of 7. So because it is a common, so ancestor will be 8, right? Similarly, if you see one more example, the common ancestor or LC of this 13 and 20. So this is 13, this is 20, so the ancestor of 13 and 20 is 15, right? So this is what we need to find out. Now, how to solve this question, right? So basically, we have also solved this question LCA and binary tree, but the problem is that in binary tree, you don't have any properties. But in BST, in binary search tree, we have properties. What properties? That for any given node values, all lesser values will be on the left subtree and all higher values will be on the right subtree right like if you see for 8 all all these values which are in left subtree are in the lesser than this one and all values which are in right subtree which are higher than this 8 right so we can use this functionality we can use this properties here when we are solving the question so let's solve this one for 2 and 7 let's say if you are solving this case right so it means i have given this value 2 and 7 now if you see that we will start from here because this is my root so we'll start from here now we have 2 and 7 right we know only these two values 2 and 7 so what we can do here we can basically check that because this will be the n1 and this will be n2 right so can we say that if n1 and n2 if both are less than this one this node of value it means it means we need not to go in the right subtree we need to go only in this direction in this direction right so what we can do that if both n1 and n2 are less than this node value then our node will be this node of left this we can say so let's say this condition if you see that this condition if you talk about so here we are saying that this condition that if node of data if node of data like this case 
this is node of data so it if node of data is greater than this n1 and if node of data is greater than n2 like this one it means this value is greater than this one this one then i can say that node will be equals to node of left right because then i can easily move here because then i need not to go here i can go here in this case when this node of data is less than both n1 and n2 like this case for 13 and 20 for 13 and 20 for 13 and 20 this node value if it is lesser than both the values then i need to go in this direction right this case if you see else if node of data is less than n1 and if node of data is less than n2 then my node will be should be node of right right it means i need to go this way now let's say if this value if n1 and n2 if not less if either it will be both greater than this one then i will move this one or if these values are both lesser than this one then i will move here but if any values if any values are equal or not different then in this case i will break that node will be my answer right so what will happen like for, let's say for 2 and 7 for 2 and 7 reach here so my node is this one now right because i am operating this is in while loop and i am operating this until while node of is not null until node is not null so now my node will be node of left my it means i am here now let's see my n1 is less than this one but my n2 is greater than this one so in this case what will happen that this will not match this will not match so it will break and my node whatever the node will be that will be my answer right same let's say for this one as well for 2 and 6 let's say if it was 2 and 6 so what would happen that i am re i have reached here now again in this case the n1 this case won't match because uh, my n2 is equal to node of data and similarly this will also not match because my n2 is equal to node data so it will break and my answer will be uh, and my answer will be whatever the node value is so my node value is this one 6 so that will return right let's see this case also for 2 and 15 so for 2 and 15 even the first case will be uh, for it the root will be the answer why because if you see for n1 n1 is less than this one and n2 is greater than this one so it means it will not go here not go here so it will break so it means the node of the node will be my answer right now there can be a case that there can be a case that we don't have any common ancestor right or let's say if something is missing so in this case what will happen that our node will be null at the last so in this case what we can return because my node will be null so it in this case it can return null that's it right so this is how basically we will solve the question this is my logic if you see this is my logic that i will start from i will just check while node is not null and i will check these three conditions if node one dot data is greater than n2 n1 and n2 then i will move node equals to node of left if node of data is less than n1 and less than n2 as well then i will move node equal to node of right and i will keep on doing this because this is in while this is until node is not null else i will break so whenever it is break it means whatever my node is that will be my answer right and at the last i can return node so even if it is break my node will be the answer and if it is null then also in this case my node will be the null so that is my answer right so this is how i can solve the question and uh, this is how we can see the lowest common ancestor for a given value in bht so let me show you the code as well though the code is uh, exactly same what we have shown here but still so that uh, you can see so this is how i have created uh, my bht now here i'm calling the function find lca where i'm passing the when i'm passing the root node value or the root value and i'm passing the two given values which i want to check so here i'm passing 2 and 6 and let's go here find lca now this is just a negative case let's say if my node is null let's say if your binary search tree is null so in this case i can say that null there is no lca for this case but if it is not the case so i'll operate this until node is not null and i will do in while and i will check if node of data is greater than n1 and node of data is greater than n2 then i need to go in left direction and if node of data is less than n1 and node of data is le less than n2 then in this case i need to go right side right else i will break and in this case my node will be the answer right so at the last i will return node that is my answer so i am checking that uh, if if your lc is not null so print the node of data right so return you can print the value 6 so for 2 and 6 that will be my answer let's say for 2 and 7 for 2 and 7 we return that 6 should be the answer so again the 6 should be the answer let's say for 2 and 15 for 2 and 15 the answer should be 8 roots so answer is 8 right so this is how we can solve the question now if you talk about the time complexity to solve this question right so what is happening here that if you see time complexity let's say if h is the height of the tree so what is happening that i'm going 
it i am going either in the left direction or right direction right so it means you see here that i started from here then i can go here then i can go here at last right so it means if h is the height of tree the time complexity will be big of h so i need to traverse only h elements if there are total n elements and if my height is h so i need to traverse only h elements because i'm using the properties of bst so i'm not traversing all that nodes i'm traversing as per the values right so at maximum i need to traverse big o of h and if you talk about the space complexity so as such i'm not using an extra space so my space complexity will be big o of 1 right so that will be my time complexity and space complexity to solve this question so that's it about this video and uh, this is very important question if you have any doubts please write in the comment section we'll try to explain that and i will also put the source code into to description section so if you want then you can also get it from there so that's it and if you have liked the video then please like it and subscribe the channel for more such videos thank you